I'm Nancy and I'm here today to instruct you in infant CPR. It's essential for all caregivers of infants to know infant CPR. The number one reason that infants don't receive their CPR when it's needed is that the caregivers are afraid to do so or lack the knowledge to do so. So we're here today to provide you with that knowledge. CPR simply provides oxygen and blood to the heart and the brain in a non-breathing infant. The easiest way to remember the steps of the CPR is to remember the word cab. C is for cardiac, A is for airway, B is for breathing. So let's get started. So if you walk into the room, the baby's too scattered or just seems too still, what you would want to do is just gently grab the foot, tap on the bottom of the foot, yell the baby's name. If there's no response, yell for help. Help! If somebody comes to respond to you, be firm. Tell them, call 911. Okay, then you would just gently take your baby over to a hard, flat surface. You want to check to see if the baby's breathing, if there's signs of lifelessness. You want to check for a brachial pulse. You would find it in the upper arm of the baby in between the two muscles. If you check with the tips of your fingers, only slightly not to occlude the pulse. If you're undetermined whether the pulse is there or if you see signs of lifelessness, then you would proceed with the CPR. What you would do is try to find an imaginary line in between the nipples. Go one finger depth below that. You want to place your forefinger and your middle finger, finger perpendicular on the baby's sternum. You're going to push hard. You're going to push fast. You're going to push at a rate of 100 a minute. You're going to go to a depth of one and a half inches. Just like this. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Up to 30. After the 30 compressions, you would go to your breathing. During your compressions, you allow the chest to completely recoil. You never leave your fingertips off of the skin so that you're not pressing in different directions. Always have your fingertips in, in on the skin. After the 30 compressions, then you're going to breathe for the baby. Take one hand, put it on the forehead. Gently pull it back with the two fingers. You gently lift the chin. You only go to a sniffing position. You're going to cover your mouth over the baby's mouth and nose. You're going to give a slight puff of air, just enough for the chest to rise and fall. Once the chest has risen and fallen, you're going to give a second rescue breath. I'll show you how to do that now. After your two rescue breaths, you would go back to your compressions. Again, one finger width below the nipple line, and you would do 30 compressions. You would do a series of five um, compressions and breathing series before you would actually stop the CPR. Once the five series are done, if no one's ever came to ask what kind of help you needed, this is the point where you would go and call 911 yourself. Remember, you continue CPR until a trained professional comes and relieves you. If someone has already called 911, you continue with the same series of your CPR. Remember, any CPR is better than no CPR at all. Another problem that we come around is that the babies um, choke. If you find your baby in the crib or lying on one of its play areas and it has a very high-pitched cry or no cry at all, you notice it can't get any air out, then the baby's choking on something. What you want to do is gently pick it up. You're going to rest the baby's face in your hand. You're going to use the long bone of your arm as a hard surface. Just gently turn the baby over always controlling the head and the neck with your hand. You're going to give it five back blows. You can't give it little taps. You have to give it a hard enough um, back blow that it would eject the object from the baby's throat. So you give five back blows. You gently turn the baby over by grasping the back of its head with your other hand using the other long bone of your arm. You're going to keep the baby downward. You're going to place your fingers at the same um, location as you did with the compressions that we discussed earlier. You're going to give five chest thrusts. If the baby's still not crying, still no airflow. You would continue the five back blows, the five chest thrusts, until the object is ejected from the throat, the baby starts crying, or the baby passes out. 
Once the baby would pass out, you would place it on a hard, flat surface to start your CPR in your normal um, cycle as we have talked about before. Prior to starting, you would open the baby's mouth. If you see an object, you would pluck it out. If you don't see an object, you do not blindly sweep a baby. You put them down, do the compressions. When you breathe for the baby, you may not be able to get the breath in. You would reposition the head again, try to breathe again. If you cannot get a breath in, then you would start your back blows and chest thrusts again, as we talked about. I hope this has helped you know the proper steps of CPR and how to dislodge an object from the baby's throat if it were choking or coughing. Um, do you have any questions concerning either the CPR or the choking infant? No. Well, thank you for your time. And if you do have any questions or any concerns, Please ask anybody on the birth center and we should be able to answer any questions for you.